Let's call the meeting of August 28th, Spokane City Council briefing session to order. Welcome everybody, it's a smoky Monday, so some of our folks are gonna be online to protect themselves. And we're going to start with the uh, consent, it's actually August 21st, we're gonna start with the consent uh, agenda of August 28th and take it away, yeah. We're starting with the 28th. Okay, Mr. Jacoby. Yeah, thank you. Whatever pleases you. And if I could first do roll call. <laughs> We've been on break. I'm out of sync, thank you, Terry. <laughs> Council President Kinnear. I guess I'm here. Council Member Cathcart. Present. Council Member Stratton. Here. Council Member Wilkerson. Present. Council Member Sapone. Here. Let the record reflect Council Member Bingle is absent. All right, now All right so we're gonna start for tonight's August 21st consent agenda. Uh, number one is a five-year master value blanket of Two Rivers Terminal, and this will be presented by Car uh, Kyle Arlington. And is Kyle he, on? He is on. Line. Oh, there he is, okay, welcome. Good afternoon, can everyone hear me now? Yes. Okay, item number one is a request for approval to award a five-year value blanket to Two Rivers Terminal LLC. It's for the purchase of sodium bisulfite on an as-needed basis to the River Park Water Reclamation Facility from August 15th, 2023 to August 14th, 2028. Uh, the contract went through a competitive bidding process and Two Rivers was the lowest responsive bidder. The total cost for the value blanket over the five-year period will be $1,576,412.50. And I'd be happy to take any questions now. Any questions? Thank you. All right, perfect. Moving on to okay, number thank two. You. Thank you, Kyle. Uh, contract with Key Code Media for audio video system upgrades to City Council Chambers in the Briefing Center. And this will be briefed by Jason Koniski. Good afternoon, Council. I'm Jason Nikonoski. This is the contract we briefed on July 17th originally committee. And uh, then again, a briefing that was deferred from the 31st. So this is a contract to upgrade the IT and AV uh, equipment for both the brief chambers and the council chambers for a total of $225,762.37. Any questions? Need it. All right. Thank you, Jason. Then I believe do you need to make a motion for number three, Council President? Yes, we do. Um, we need to uh, make a motion to substitute the following item. So can I have a motion for uh, 0017? Are we suspending the rules first and then the... God, I, no. I am off my game. Do you have to suspend the rules to substitute? Well, it says um, request yes. motion to substitute. C Terry? Are we suspending the rules? No, because okay. it was received in time. Okay, all right. So do I have a motion to substitute? So moved. No second. second. Any discussion? On the substitution, no. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Great, thank you. All right, so moving on to then number three. This is agreement amendment B with the Salvation Army for the operation of the Trent Resource and Assistance Center. And this will be briefed by Jen Saracides. Good afternoon. Um, I did send out an email previously. There was a few errors on this. When you look at the, um, the agenda sheet, the breakdown of expenses um, is incorrect. If you uh, take those exact budget accounts and look at the agenda sheet, those are the new um, breakdowns for each one of those categories for ARPA, REIT 1, and ROW Year 2. Um, the other error that I found was on the uh, total cost on the... Um, the agenda sheet, uh, it was listed at 5,640,568. That total is 9,140,586. All of that is current and accurate and reflected in the contract. So the contract is correct. 
So uh, with that, I'd like to uh, request that we may be able to enter into contract amendment B with the Salvation Army to increase funding by $3.5 million from re ARPA and Department of Commerce funds. These additional funds will allow us to um, continue on with the contract through the end of this year, um, uh, finalizing December 31st of 2023. And we have a breakdown of those costs Yes. All of those costs. Yeah. So if you actually look on the um, the briefing, um, the committee agenda sheet, there is the breakdown where it has ARPA at two hundred sixty three thousand five hundred and two dollars and eighty five cents, REIT one at one million five eleven four ninety seven fifteen, and row year two at one million seven twenty five uh, seven hundred twenty five thousand, um, all going into that three million. And then, do we have a breakdown of the services or the? the services provided or numbers? So it's 350 is the number of beds that are provided at the track shelter. The services contract held with Revive is separate and does not require any additional funds. So Revive's not included in Revive that. is not included. This is only the Salvation Army for operations of the 350 beds located at the track shelter. And we kept Revive through the end of the year as well? We did. Um, yeah, I just had some questions. Does this update any of the services that are being provided that kind of been questionable about like the number of beds? Does it get that into alignment about what they have been doing so that it's now in the contract or does it keep it at the previous level? So the existing contract says um, 250 beds is the base level, but that they can increase up to, you know, 350. So we left it at that because they are operating within the contract. Um, and then originally we were requested to have their contract end early. Um, the goal was the end of September. Um, we pushed that out to the end of October and then um, through discussion, we were able to extend that just through the remaining point of their contract. And um, given that they've been uh, providing 350 and their contract allows them to provide 350, we didn't make any adjustments to that part of the contract. So I guess I'm still having confusion around that because it seems like they're not expecting to do 350 year round. And so then it's going beyond the expenses of what we're contractually asking them to do. So are we going to get in the situation again where the costs are going to be increasing by the end of the year because they're billing us at 250 but providing 350 so they're just going to ask for a reimbursement later? No, the total amount that we're requesting to get us through the end of the year is based on the average billing um, that we've had every single month, which is approximately $750,000 per month to operate that facility. So we just took $750,000 per month to extend us out through the end of the year, and we won't offer them any additional funds for that. We also do have a current uh, NOFA that just closed on Friday, and we are going to be evaluating those applicants to see um, if we want to have a new operator um, effective January 1st. Just a question. Yes. Since we're using the track shelter as a warming, cooling, inclement weather smoke, and people are going there, when will those costs start to show up? Are they because of people just going there sitting, or are they feeding them when they get there? So you can come if you don't have it. You can come back to me, but that is a concern of mine also because that will that will be such a fluctuating number of people. How do we put a cost on that, and where will those funds come from as well? Yeah, and, and to date, um, and Kim, correct me if I'm wrong, but um, Salvation Army had um, two available beds at the location, and so they were not full and did not have a surge of folks due to the um, air quality issues. Um, so we don't anticipate that we'll see an increase in the next couple of days, being that the heaviest part of the air quality did not um, have people accessing that facility in large numbers. But, the, but to hear the information out, you can just go there to get out of the air. Mm -hmm. So people have not just shown up as a place to be during this window of time. So I'm just trying to, library closes at 7, they say track is a place to go, so help me understand how that's working or not working, and should we just take it off as a place to, that's accessible to people? Originally, when we, good afternoon, mm -hmm. council members, council president. Um, originally, when we connected with the Salvation Army about moving forward a couple of months ago in regards to cooling centers as well as safe air. We asked them to keep track of those that, you know, up until the three, like now at 350, they're also extended to 400. Um, so if that becomes necessary, that from 350 to 400 will go under the money that 
CHHS has for the cooling and safe air warming centers. So we've asked them to keep track of how many people and so that those billings would go differently than what this contract will be. Okay. Those before that is gonna be pretty hard, although they have had um, quite a few folks that have come in from the fires. So we had asked them to make sure that they kind of keep track of those differences so that some of that can go into the cooling warming funding versus the truck, this homeless funding, even though they may, they may actually be unhoused, but at least we're trying to have some sort of, um, you know, much like what we had tried to do last year with the libraries, but um, they're very, the Salvation Army has been willing to keep track of that. So, and, and right now, um, also just so everyone is aware, it does mention full at the, on their app earlier. We are working really hard. We have been in communication. That was because of the timing of the smoke, um, you know, over the weekend. Um, we've been working with them to try to, well, to get that on the Shelter Me app to where it says 400 verses so that um, they don't say they're full. So that every, but their staff is really well educated, especially, just two seconds, sorry, yeah. um, in regards to um, the cooling centers to know that anybody who comes in is welcome. I'm sorry, council member. Can no, I you're, you're fine. I uh, didn't mean to interrupt. I was just trying to clarify. So you said that there was an issue with the timing of the smoke which makes me think that this hasn't been updated in three days. Is that the case? Well, no, it had been updated because up until now they had had, during cooling there, it's kind of like um, Jen just mentioned, actually some of their numbers went down. They averaged like 200, 330 normally. They had gone down to like about 310, um, you know, throughout those days. So, but as soon as the smoke started occurring, they were up to 229 again, and they became two, uh, three, sorry, 329, 343, and then last night they were at the, they would have been at 348. So we were seeing that, that climb. So over the weekend, that was fine. It was today when all the ones that stated it was full, and we were unable to update any of that. My shelter me, Spokane, during my understanding is during the weekend. So did this uh, early this afternoon, we've tried to connect with Diane Hutton who can make those changes from their side so that it will reflect that um, it's not full, that there would be roughly 49 beds, maybe whatever that is. And then is it possible to look at the, the you said that it, the number had reduced to around 310 to look at that delta of the increase and see what percentage of those folks were regular guests in the past versus those who are completely new to the system, meaning those are probably the ones that are there just for the smoke and no right. other reasons? There probably is because a lot of people may not stay for a bed. So those that stayed for a bed, maybe folks that have just come in to have the shelter for a while and those that maybe stayed for a period of time and then especially during the cooling time, the cooling center time may have departed and, at that time. And then where, where else in the community would folks go if they're having smoke issues that wouldn't be a, a shelter? All of the libraries. Um, Even after it, hours? Are we extending those overnight? The after hours have not been extended. No. Okay. So they still have to go to a shelter? Yes. And most folks will go, you know, would not, would stay home versus that's yeah. kind of what showed last year, which is why the libraries didn't extend hours. I know I visited several of the um, libraries on Saturday delivering masks and water, and there were not a lot of people yeah. in, in that. In the well, area I think during the day, I mean, the yeah. mall is overloaded with people, right. department stores, Movies. there's more people than I've seen before. So they're, they're not going and sitting in a library. And so I'm right. just thinking about what happens after 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock, 11 right. o'clock at night. That, that is it, one of those issues that we're all yeah. trying to find solutions for um, at this time. So, Council thank you. Member Sapone, did you have a Yeah, question? another question. So just to go back to the number of beds, it sounds like we're just averaging over the last year, but there's no guarantee that they will provide 350 or at the current dollar level, they could start billing us more in November, December when the weather turns. I wouldn't expect so given that the average that we did incorporated the cold winter months that we had this year. Um, and we didn't, we didn't see a substantial increase during those times over that 750. So that, uh, that 750 is an average that incorporates those colder winter months. So I think that we, sh we would be sufficient with the amount available. I guess how many cold winter months were there versus not cold winter months and what's that different? Yeah, I don't have that information right in front of me to be able to share with you, but I'm, I could definitely get that information. I'd be glad yeah. to show you a breakdown of, you know, their month by month billing costs so you can see what that looks yeah. like. I, 
I guess I, I worry if it was two months of cold winter months higher and then eight months of lower, the average is lower and we're going to ramp back up. I don't know of any guarantee. Uh, I also was wondering about the indirect costs. Right now the contract says NA or it's blank, but we are reimbursing for those costs. So yes. is that should that be in the contract? Why are so, we reimbursing if it's not in the contract? So we can make that adjustment, but essentially the, the guidance is, is that whatever the funding, so when we originally put that contract through, we did not have a funding source that was associated with it. And so we put NA because we don't know what the guidance tells us about that. Um, Federal dollars require that we either do a 10% MTD, MTDC or um, accept a federally negotiated cost rate. The, uh, Salvation Army does have a federally negotiated cost rate and the funds that we're gonna continue to give them do include federal dollars. So they are eligible to charge that federally negotiated rate. In the absence of a contract having anything um, written on that line, it does default to those guidelines of the funding sources that are providing the information. Hmm. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. I just want to say it was a crazy weekend. We all lived through it, but thank you and thank your staff because I know a lot of people had a hand in, you know, trying to find services for people. You said that you were delivering water, and yeah. so thank you. It's appreciated, and um, we appreciate all your hard work. Thank you. I know. Okay. Question for them. Thank you. Thank you, thank you both. Thank you. thank you. I just wanted to make a motion since this is on the agenda tonight and there were several remaining questions that they were going to provide follow-up so i wanted to make a motion to defer this for a week Can it be deferred? I, what, what are the impacts of deferral jen the impacts of deferral are that we may not be able to pay the bills as they come in from salvation army for one week so we're out of money today uh, I don't know if we're out of money today. I can get that information for you, but it was very close. Okay. I'd have to look and see what, what did they bill us um, for July, which we would have just gotten, um, and see where we're at in our, in our total amount available. And that's a monthly billing cycle that yes, you reimburse Yes, they bill us on? monthly. Mm -hmm. I'll second the motion. Discussion. Oh, I just hate to. I just. I'm looking at staff issues, staffing, and. Hey, Jen. This is deferred. I'm sorry One to week. make you. <laughs> yeah. I, I, if this is deferred, we're talking. What does that do to staff time? And I, because I know you guys are wild busy and just trying to get the work done. You've got other things looming over you as well what is that does that just create an extra load of stress um you know i mean I, I i would say that the biggest point of stress would be having conversations with a provider if we're not able to pay a billing which is um conversations that we have a lot either because of you know delayed contracts or some other things um it's not is not good for us to, to not be able to pay for a bill as it comes in the door. Um, that being said, I come, I'm pretty much here every Monday. So as far as my staff time, um, it does, I'm already here at these meetings. So if we needed to defer that we could, um, I guess I do also want to, um, acknowledge that, um, you know, we were told, um, that we would get, um, additional funding through 2024 and we did issue, a uh, and NOFA and, um, to date, I don't have any funding secured for 2024 for track. Um, so, you know, whether or not we go into reviewing those NOFAs going forward is also just a consideration that's related to this issue. Right. Okay. Could I just relate it to that? Um, and I, I think Shay may have sent you a, a note on this, but it would be great just to get a sense of where that was distributed to, um, how far and wide the reach was on that RFP that went out. Yeah, we have a, um, a funding opportunities button that you can click to sign up. So I, I mean, I could provide like a list of how many people. But did we publish it in public, like national publications, regional publications? Like where did we actually put out the right. notices? No, we just posted on our webpage and then we sent it out to you and um, our email lists. Yeah, there's a huge yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Did I say what? Yeah. Just one more note, um, Council Member Sapone on the monthly. Um, if my memory serves me correctly, if, like in the January and the February billings, just in winter months, it ran like one, I'm sorry, 710,000 and 715,000. The November and the December ones were like six, they were a lot less, 
numbers were probably down a little bit then. So I, I don't want to go to that, but that's why we moved because the highest we had at that time, or that might have been March, was 715,000. That's why we went to that 750 element. We did that in March and used that since March on. Eric Finch had started to do that as a number that would we felt might be safe in regards to the amount of the monthly billings. Yes, Councilman. I, I, I'm just going to ask Councilmember Zappone what he would like to accomplish in the one week deferral the blank NA spots yeah. filled in? Well, that and I'm still, I mean, even when you're saying that, that makes it more confusing to me because now our average is higher than January and February for the last months, which presumably means that we've been operating at nearly 350 the whole time. So therefore, the average is higher than $750,000. No, I, I, I can get you a month by month breakdown. I think when I said average, like we average, like on the regular, the bills are about 750 a month. And then that, that has been inclusive. Um, I'd have to have the, the numbers in front of me, which I apologize, I don't. Uh, and then the number of beds that is. I guess my concern is I want to make sure that we aren't going to be surprised with but. overcharges later that we'd have to pay back. And making sure that we are basically funding at 350 beds and that but I don't Salvation think, Army will. I don't think they can overcharge. Isn't there they, a. They have been overcharging us beyond the contract, and we had to go back and pay. Sort, sort of. I, the only thing I would add is, is, you know, being in some of our budget meetings where we've talked about this, we've kind of laid out what those costs were and showed, you know, that, that there has been a reduction even in the winter months in the month-to-month uh, -month cost. And so the average is, it's sort of a high-end estimate, but it's still an average. Yes. Um, and so I, I don't get the sense that before the end of this year we would see any overruns, because I think it's taking all of that into account. But I don't necessarily think it contemplates a new provider, but that obviously would start in the new year. So I, I don't think we need a deferral on this, uh, um, just personally, but, um, but I understand the questions that you're asking. Cause so I would offer a compromise. We have some time, and instead of deferring it now, this puts pressure on you guys, um, maybe Jen and Kim can come back with some of the answers that would help you by the time we're ready to vote. And then we could take this separately, and then if at that time you want to defer it, we could do so. Yeah, I can take back my motion. Does that work for you? Yes. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you, Council Parrot. Can I just clarify? So the questions being monthly actuals yeah and that and and then and, and, and then i guess the question is whether we need to update that in the contract or not that to guarantee that that level will be provided because right now it's the contract still has that flex beds and it's not clear what we're paying for and so they can change what they're charging so that's kind of the question but if we've been operating at 350 and this is the 350 dollar amount then i guess my question is why didn't we just say 350 beds I don't know. I, I'm glad to make the update. I guess at the time when we were doing this, the contract was slated to end so soon, and it was within the scope of their existing contract to provide 350 beds. Um, and then the issue with the indirect cost rate was addressed via issues that or via um, reviews that we'd already done, and so I just didn't change them. I mean, I'm, I'm glad to do that if that's something that you want me to do. Um, I, I would put into the um, indirect cost rate line, it would say 10% MTDC or indirect cost um, federally negotiated rate. Um, and then I can change the bed section in the amendment to say that this section here um, means that you can go up to, to, uh, to 350 with the understanding that if they're providing any additional services through um, cleaner air centers, that that's being billed elsewhere. That makes sense. That would help me if, it, if that's very clear that additional clean air, cooling, warming is a separate issue versus this contract. Okay. So yeah. does that work for everybody? Sure. Does that work for you? Yes, I will go upstairs and okay. do that right away. Thank you. As soon as I'm done here. Appreciate it. All right, should we go on? All right, don't go too far there, Jen. But we'll have uh, number four first uh, from a special counsel uh, contract amendment number three with Craig Trueblood, the law firm KNL Gates, and this will be briefed by Lyndon Smithson. Good afternoon, counsel. Thank you for having me. Uh, this is another contract amendment. I've been here before asking for this. Uh, this is a very specific law firm that we have employed for our NP, NPDES permit uh, appeal that we have with the state. This is in a litigation status, so we are doing a lot of discovery and 
Uh, we have been negotiating with the state trying to get a uh, basically a variance on on that permit. We have not been able to sec to secure that yet, so we're still working on that. But Craig Trueblood is a specialist in this field, so it is uh, we are paying commensurate prices. Let me let me put it that way. Mm -hmm. We have already paid two hundred fifty thousand dollars about in on this contract. And um, going into the litigation process, discovery is going to be expensive, we believe. So that's why we are asking for the amount that we are. Can we recover any of those attorney fees? Unfortunately, we can't because it is a, um, it's a regulatory agency. So this isn't a litigation process like we would think of a, a lawsuit where somebody harmed us or damaged us. We're basically told we have to comply with a level from our wastewater treatment plant yeah. that currently we don't have the ability to comply with. Okay. Got it. Thank you. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Lynn, how many times have we extended this contract? Uh, I believe this is the third or fourth time we have asked for um, a contract amendment. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank you. All right, thank you. So number five is a contract with Volunteers of America, Spokane, to disperse funds for development fees and construction activities for Crosswalk. And this will be briefed by Jen Saracides. Okay, good afternoon. So um, the City of Spokane under Ordinance C-36161 allocated $1 million to Volunteers of America for development fees and construction activities for the new Crosswalk Teen Shelter and Transitional Housing located at 3024 East Mission Avenue, Spokane, Washington. We request permission to distribute these funds to VOA. The contract will run from August 1st, 2023 through December 31st of 2023, and the funds must be spent during that time. So Jen, are these the funds that we allocated, it was maybe a year ago or six months ago to them with those deadlines? I believe it was even I, before that. I think okay. it was before I started okay. that these funds were allocated. And then they got money from the state, right? Yes. And we said, wait, you've got double dipping, essentially. And so they're spending these first before they're spending the state money because this has a timeline. Uh, I'm not sure of how they're stacking, but they did. We did reach out to request whether or not they actually needed these dollars and if yeah. they could use them in the time frame provided. And they said that they did need those dollars and that they would okay. use them in the time frame provided. So I, I kind of had my eye on these dollars. So yeah. okay, yeah, I think yeah, lots of people. So I, they're gone now. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. Any questions? Did, did I hear correctly? They're eyeing kind of an October um, groundbreaking or something like yes, that. Yes, that is what I've been told. Okay. Yeah. Oh, and I do want to call out that there are no indirect costs that are associated with this. And then you can see on their main um, uh, cover page of their grant, we listed specifically no indirect costs. And then in their billing sheet, it only gives them the opportunity to bill for the development fees and construction activities specifically. Thank you. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Jen. All right. Number six is a consultant agreement amendment with Dow LLC out of Redmond, Washington, to provide additional tasks supporting the citywide traffic calming program. And this will be briefed by Inga Note, who's online. All right. Good afternoon, council members. Um, so this is a contract amendment to add on the work for those three studies that were authorized through Cycle 10. Um, those would be the ones on 18th Avenue, Indian Trail, and um, the Altamont Loop area. And then also there's a, a little extra on there for Dow to do some value engineering on a few of the, the larger projects that came out of the citywide effort through the workshops. So, do you have any questions? I do. Is this the last reiteration of Dow? After they've done this work, then are they finished? It should be, yeah. Okay. Mm, should be. Okay, thank you. Do you have a question? Yeah, I want to follow up on that because Inga, my understanding from one of our most recent traffic calming workshops was that Dal would also go back and look at projects that were excluded in the process. I'm thinking specifically of Emerson Garfield and um, I can't remember the name of the road down the hill there, but some that were missed out of that project so that we could swoop back and do more value engineering, not just on those ones right on the bubble, but potentially more curb bulbs and stuff throughout the city projects. Would that be an, an additional contract then? 
I, I guess I'd have to go back and speak specifically which project that was. Uh, from the money that we put in here was mainly to look at projects that, that ranked in like number one and number two for each neighborhood and to value engineer the ones that, that were over that $300,000 or $500,000 limit. So if, if it was one of those, then it's included. If not, then we would probably need to come back and add that in at some point. Yeah, Council Member Cathcart, you can help jog my memory too. But we had talked about how there were not just that was one example, but there were other places that hadn't been missed through the process. So trying to make sure that they weren't left out of the next four years. Yeah, I, I do remember the conversation around, you know, whether we keep Dowell like next year uh, reviewing some of those kind of third, you know, the third and fourth level projects. Uh, or some of the ones that were missed entirely, the neighborhoods didn't submit them in time or it just didn't get on, onto our, our worksheet. Um, I, I think that's what you're, you're yeah. referring to, right? And having them kind of look at that. And I think, you know, talking with council president this morning about just the cost of this, I'm wondering, you know, have we gone back to them to talk about maybe any ways to just tighten, tighten things up and try to save some dollars? Because in the big picture, it's a lot of money that we're spending on consultants. Mm -hmm. I guess I, I put in there the scope of what we had discussed, so I would probably need to get back with the subcommittee and figure out exactly what parts we wouldn't want to include if we were to tighten it up. And it, it was a, a pretty wide open scope of work for those other three studies out of cycle 10, and I, I did work with Abby and try to figure out what all should be studied in there, and I, I thought we were had a pretty comprehensive scope of work for each of them. But if it's too big, um, we could look at scaling it down. Well, do we want to just circle back with the subcommittee once more this next week? And I, w I was going to suggest if, and I guess I don't know logistics how easy or difficult it is, but I was like, can we separate the cycle 10? Because those ones I'm actually most comfortable with because we agreed on those last year. So I want to keep those moving forward. But for the value engineering and the future projects, if that would, that could be a separate contract or is that, is it easier just to do it all at once? It's way easier to do it all at once. If um, it, I, I need some of that value engineering money to do a little bit of work on projects that have been picked for construction in 2024. So if we delay that, that could delay the design and they wouldn't make it out. Did, who else had a question? Did you have a question? No, I was just making sure that, so the three projects you mentioned, which perked my ears on the Altamont one, so those are included in this additional monies that we're requesting right now? They are. Okay. Yeah, that, that was money that was allocated through cycle 10. I want to say it was um, around $200,000 total between the three neighborhoods. So could we defer for a week and have traffic calming meet this week to do that part or will that delay the 2024? So my question would I'm be, out of town next week and also would not be able to make the meeting this Friday. Okay. So even if council, if traffic calming met, would it really change the identified projects from cycle 10? No, not, no. The, not, not no. the cycle 10, but the new stuff. But those were just conversations. Those were never a commitment to do that work, right? right. Yeah, so if we, if we were to approve this, then we can always kind of continue that discussion, right? I mean, we can, we can kind of make changes looking forward if we were to approve this tonight. Marlene? We can certainly make changes to the scope as long as they haven't spent the money on it yet. So we could we could change the, the scope a little bit, or if we needed to do a second amendment for those other things, we could we could come back with that. Um, if you approve what Inga's proposed, you can get the three studies done that mm -hmm. I think you guys have been anticipating, yeah. Yeah. and a couple of value engineering pieces that Inga and Inga needs to get done, and then we could come back if we still wanted to review that. I know that traffic calming funds is sort of a topic also around the budget, so um, perhaps we, we go forward with what she's got, and then if we want to make an, an, another adjustment, we could we could negotiate it, an additional amendment to the contract. Right. Okay. Does that work for everybody? Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. 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 All right. We're good, Inga. Thank you. Thanks, Inga. Thank you, okay, Inga. Thank you.
All right, Marlene, number seven. Yeah, reimbursement I was up anyway. <laughs> yep. So this is um, a contract with Spokane Transit Authority to reimburse some of the work that city staff will be doing around um, preliminary engineering and design of the Division Street Bus Rapid Transit Line. So this is for up to 100,000, yes, council member. Are, are we learning from the Central City Line and how we put this together? Because I think there's a lot of things we can learn from that project um, and apply it, you know, hopefully do better in future projects. And so I'm just curious, is that a piece of this is to really learn from what we did, maybe do it better differently? And Yeah, I, I think so. And to coordinate more closely so that we, we can get things a little more streamlined. Um, Catherine Miller is going to be doing a lot of this work personally. So um, we do this with um, WashDOT too. Um, so for the work that the city puts into, you know, elements of the North Spokane um, corridor, for example, we get reimbursed. So this should help us stay in closer coordination with them. But we, we do have other recommendations for how that should move forward. And I think um, we'll be sharing that with um, STA regardless. Okay. All right. Thank you, Marlene. All right, so now before we move it into number eight, looking for a request of motion to substitute. So move substitution. We have a second. Second. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, go ahead. All right, number eight is the public works contract with waterproofing technologies of the Martin Luther King Community Center roof improvement project. And this will be briefed by Patrick Stryker. Hey. Good afternoon, city council members. Yeah, we, um, as you know, were successful for the uh, Department of Commerce grant, and we are ready to go now on the MLK Center Roof. Um, Weatherproofing Technologies Incorporated will do the work for 797830, um, and I'm hoping we can get moving on this before the weather turns really bad. Any questions for Patrick? Okay, thanks, Patrick. Right. Thank you, Patrick. Number nine is the uh, claims and payments previously approved by obligations including parks and libraries with the amounts filled in. Uh, number 10 is the city council meeting minutes for July 10th, 17th, 24th, and August 3rd. And then now moving before uh, number 11, we'll need a request motion to suspend council rules. So moved. Second. Great, thanks. Discussion? Is All it, in favor, go is ahead. Is it suspending the rules for purposes of adding all items to the agenda or one no, item at a time? just uh, this one. No, my motion was for all items. Well, so going 11 A, B, C, are you, is that what you're talking about? And D. Yes, as, okay. and D. as well as we've got two others, C36432 and C36433. Can we do that separately? Can we just do this one? Because... I would support going individually but not all how many votes does it take to suspend the rules just for clarity i think four oh, four one more than majority yeah. plus one thank you so the reason i'm saying that is because i'm kind of channeling councilmember bingle here sure and sure. <laughs> wanting to just go one at a time because then we have ordinance um three six four three two another suspension of rules well, Happy to accept the, the, the friendly uh, change there. So. Okay. You didn't want me to keep going, did you? No, I think we can just get her done. Okay, thank you. All right. So we have um, the uh, motion and a second. All of those in favor, aye. 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 All right. All right. So number 11 is the therapeutic courts um, interagency agreements Excuse between. Me. That was just the suspension of the rules. Right oh, yeah. now we need a motion to add it. Yeah. So move addition. Second. Discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right, perfect. This will be better the second time. Uh, number 11 is the therapeutic courts uh, interagency agreements between the Washington State Administrative <laughs> Office of Courts and the Spokane Municipal Court for the fiscal year of 2024. And this will be briefed by Sarah Thompson. She's online. Mm -hmm. There she is. Good afternoon, Sarah Thompson with Municipal Court. We have the two agenda items, the fully executed, exe sorry, executed agreements between the Administrative Office of the Courts and Municipal Court for funding July 1 of 2023 through June 30th of 2024 to support the therapeutic courts and the respective SBO to increase the revenue by the $738,050 in the matching appropriations that are outlined on the SBO for salary and benefits, equipment, training and travel, and the professional services. Thank you. 
All right. Well, thank you, Sarah. Now moving into the legislative agenda in special board, uh, budget ordinances. First one is ordinance C36418 uh, regarding general capital improvement funds, and this will be briefed by Jackie McConnell. Hello, thanks for having me here today. Um, essentially, this is an agenda item where the legislature has appropriated some funds to the police department, specifically $1.4 million for us to do a facility at our police academy. So this is just a request for us to accept those funds and allow facilities to begin the planning stages of this. Questions? Okay, we're good. Thanks, Jackie. Right, thank you, Jackie. Uh, the next ordinance Thank is you, C36419 regarding the American Rescue Plan Fund, and this will be briefed by Matt Boston. Yeah, thank you. Uh, so this is just the um, SPO that accompanies the contract that we talked about earlier, E-Code me Media for the um, IT and AV upgrades is 50000 set aside for the um, allocation needed for the firehouse. This is just transporting the fire, firehouse from location to location. Any questions? No questions for Matt? Thanks, Matt. All right, thank you, Matt. And then Ordinance C36423 regarding the housing sales tax fund, and this will be briefed by Richard Colton. Or Jen Saracides. Thank you, Jen. <laughs> Sorry, Richard Colton is up north and he's staying home today to kind of keep an eye on his house in case they need to evacuate. Um, okay, so the Affordable Housing Committee recommended the Northeast Community Center Association Triplex project for funding um, back in February of 2023. And they were um, uh, originally uh, slated for funding through CDBG. And as we did their site visit, we determined that what they were requesting was um, not to do an addition or a rehab of a building, but to actually build another secondary building on the same lot, which is not um, does not qualify for CDBG funding. So we wanted to um, transfer that funding um, over to, uh, I believe it was our, uh, no, 1590. Yeah. To 1590. And you've briefed us several times, right. I believe, on this. I did, and this yeah. is just the SBO that follows where we're going to request to increase the appropriation by three hundred thousand um, dollars solely for these contractual services. Okay. Any questions? Okay, thank you. Right. Thank you, Jen. Thanks. And now we'll be looking for a request to, to motion to suspend council rules. Yes, we will. Request has been rules. Second. For item three six four three two. Yes. yes. Once. A discussion. All right. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Good. All right. And then we need to add the following. So do I have a motion for that? So moved. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. All right. So this ordinance C36423 of mis mis miscellaneous grants funds will be presented by Sarah Thompson. I believe Sarah logged off. So mm -hmm. um, this is just the SPO that accompanies the ILAs that she briefed earlier. Perfect. Thank you, Jacoby. No questions there? We're good? No. All right, emergency ordinances, ordinance C36417 related to regulations of residential rental housing. This will be briefed by Elizabeth Shadle. Actually, I'm gonna go ahead and brief it. Okay, um, thank you, Mr. Wright. And uh, um, you may remember that this spring, the council passed a pretty comprehensive landlord tenant uh, provisions. Um, what it did not do in the process of that conversation was address SMC 1808, which was a lot of pandemic related uh, tenant relief provisions. Um, and those tenant relief uh, pandemic related provisions were outdated um, under state law. Uh, and so they also had some provisions related to employee assistance programs that expired on July 1. And the presence of 1808 um, was causing com confusion in the community about whether or not evictions were permitted without this employee uh, assistance program being in place. So council members Cathcart and Bingle proposed um, an ordinance a while ago to clarify you know, that evictions were permitted so long as repayment plans were required. Um, and uh, 
in addition, they accommodated a request from um, Council Member, um, Council President Beggs at the time to carry over some of the provisions in 1808 that protected tenants, namely enforceable debt provisions, uh, retaliation provisions, um, and they also accommodated some changes to make sure that their ordinance was consistent with state law, which uh, kept the pandemic-related eviction provisions in place until April 30th of this, late, of this year. So this particular ordinance, which is an emergency ordinance, there's a great deal of pressure in the landlord community, tenant community to get something passed, um, is to make sure that evictions are allowed to carry forward the repayment provisions that um, are part of state law, carry forward the retaliation provisions, anti-retaliation provisions, and um, make sure that landlords are not, do not have a loophole to enforce rental debt that's pandemic related as well. Questions for Chris? That was very thorough, thank you. All right, thank you, Chris. Now we'll look for another request motion to suspend council rules. So moved. And this is for 636-433 only. And why don't we go ahead and do 2023-0073 while we're at it, because they're both they're intertwined. They're both the same. Uh, I have a comment or a question about the motion. Wait, we haven't gotten a second yet. Second. Oh. Okay, now discussion. Um, I was just wondering, I know I missed briefing earlier today at committee about this, but I'm wondering what the emergency is to do it today. For which one? For the police so, vehicles. Okay. They need cars. They, oh. the, the wait time is so horrific right now. What did they say, a year and a half? Yeah. Even to, if they do it right now, they may be waiting a year and a half to get these vehicles. No, they don't even know what's in sight for the electric vehicles. There's no, no information on when they would get electric vehicles. I guess I'm trying to understand why we didn't follow regular process for this, or why we shouldn't follow regular process. Go to committee briefing. Because we've changed over from the electric vehicles that were originally, that we originally funded to make them do you want to go ahead? You can talk about well, this. Well, no, and I think we have Major McNabb that can provide additional information here that's oh, online yeah. as far as okay. the, um, the ordering window that we have and working with the police department and also fleet services and working through the council president on trying to hit this ordering window for that 25 vehicles that was allocated through the ARPA funds. So I'll hand it over if, to Major McNabb if that's okay to yeah. kind of give us some background on the urgency of getting into this ordering see window. Him. Oh, there yep, he is. Yep, he's here. Okay. Go ahead, Major McNabb. Thank you. So the reason there's an emergency is because we learned that we could order pursuit rated F-150s and possibly get them this year or likely get them this year, but the ordering window is going to close any day. So that is the urgency. I guess my question to that is when, when did you learn about that opportunity with the window closing any day? last week when we met with the Ford regional representative. And then a related question, but what was the status of ordering more F-150 Lightnings? Uh, they're having production problems right now. So we are looking for vehicles that we can get as soon as possible. Our fleet is in such a state that we uh, literally ran out of cars uh, during the fire emergency this weekend. And we need to get cars on the ground as soon as possible, or we need cars to collisions and uh, mechanical problems. And we are having to um, even purchase used vehicles to try as to uh, use as a stopgap so we can keep our operations running. But if we don't get new cars in a short order, we are going to have major service impact issues. Yeah, I guess a follow-up question. Sorry, I would have asked these earlier, so I apologize not being here, but um, I'm confused by how we're in that state because when we talked about this earlier, we had a surplus of vehicles that were just running over miles that were recommended, over the 100,000 range or over 60,000, which was recommended by Spokane Police, but we've seen that other departments use those vehicles up to 100,000, so I'm struggling with comprehending how we're in that state when we had plenty of vehicles <coughs> at that level. Um, can I ask a question to you, Councilman? Yeah. 
Is, did you review the fleet study that the, com the council commissioned? Yeah, we got that presentation too. Yeah, so um, you would see it there that I think it's, uh, Rick Giddings is here, but I, I don't remember offhand, but I think over 70% of our fleet is due for replacement. And I, that 70% might be the, might be wrong, but that's, that's what pops in my head right now without pulling it up. But uh, we are running out of cars because they get wrecked, we, they get rammed by suspects, they get put out of service, we're waiting on parts from uh, body shops to get them back out on the street or mechanical parts from the dealership to get them back out on the street. We're using cars that are so old that are, um, when we do sell them, we're getting just a matter of a few hundred dollars for them. We're still using current VIX. Um, our, our, we have a very small number of cars that are um, even under 50,000 miles. So we have majority of our cars are approaching 100,000 or well over 100,000 miles. Okay. Go ahead. So just clarity, the issue is this window will be closing and we just need the authority to order. Correct. Any other questions? Yeah, I, I had a question about when was the orders placed for the Ford F-150 Lightnings or the um, um, mach -E's. Is that what they are? Yeah. So we've received How all seven of our mach -E's and they are in use and we canceled our orders on the Lightnings because they had production problems and we're no longer offering the extended range model. Okay. So we canceled an order on vehicles that we could have tried, even though they're having problems, we could have still had that order placed, but we canceled it. Is that correct? We canceled it because we no longer offered the, the model that we needed and Rick Giddings has more on that. Actually, actually, and apologies. Yeah, the uh, the orders were actually can the the lightnings were actually canceled that we ordered originally. Um, we had the option to reorder them, but they did the, the price was much higher, and they didn't offer the extended range battery at the time. So that at that point, and we still haven't received the, the one lightning that we ordered for fleet uh, a year ago uh, that we we want to try out as a police vehicle. And so long long production delays and higher prices. Uh, less battery capacity uh, made us decide that we could get uh, Mach E's faster uh, without, uh, um, you know, uh, without kind of gambling on that lower battery on the on the lightning. Okay. Okay. Do you have more? No. No. I mean, I I guess my a comment is uh, I understand a need for vehicles. Is this why we passed it a year ago? We also have a new budget issue, and we're reviewing a lot of ARPA funding that hasn't been allocated to look at sweet backs and we're having those conversations. So I just am confused. I, I know I asked follow-up questions after the study um, from the consultants and I don't remember getting complete information from them about those follow-up questions. Um, so I, I find that frustrating and I don't think I have yet to see the Mach-E. I know we've talked about it here, but I haven't gotten a chance to see it or follow up on that. Um, but we could have made a larger purchase of the mach -E's. We could have had those today if we had made a, a larger purchase. They don't work for what we need the vehicles for. Those are admin cars. Those aren't patrol cars. And they could, I think there's some rotational things that we've talked about that could be rotated in. But So I, I don't support suspending the rules for this right now. I think there's a lot of questions and this is, it seems very fast and this is going against what state law is requiring us to do, which is to transition to electric vehicles. Okay. So we've got a motion um, to add this. We had a second. Any other discussion? Okay, good. All those in favor? Aye. 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 And no. opposed? No. Okay. All right. So the motion to suspend. Four to one. Okay. Um, and I'll, I'll make a motion to add both of those items okay. to Thank our you. agenda. Thank you. And do we have a second? Second. Great discussion. I'll just make a comment that because council member Cathcart mentioned that the Maki's don't work for what we need, but yet they still run as patrol vehicles in New York City. So I just think actually that's not true, but okay. it's been publicly reported. Not for patrol or patrol. Other, other uses, not patrol. 
Okay, you guys can duke it out yeah, later. later. <laughs> um, any other discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? No. Thank you. All right, do you want to go on to? We'll go on to uh, or, uh, resolutions and final reading ordinances. Yes, please. All right, so we have a resolution 2023-0070 Zero with accompanying uh, OPR of 2023-08304, approving settlement of claim of damages, and this will be briefed by Scott Jordan. Welcome. Is he talking? Scott, we can't hear you. Jacoby, do you, can you make some magic happen? Yeah, just unmute Okay. Go ahead, Scott. Try again, Scott. Now, Jacoby, that wasn't enough magic. <laughs> Scott, why don't you log off and then log back in and we'll come back to you. Okay, do you want right. to go on? Okay, we'll go on to the next one. Uh, for a resolution declaring a waiver of public bid requirements for the purchase of insurance premiums, and this will be briefed by Jason Nikoski. Uh, good afternoon again, Council. So the uh, resolution was originally briefed in the uh, July 24th Highs Committee. Uh, this is just a formality to allow us to use the proposals from our bid brokers then go into contracts for those insurance premiums. Uh, Scott Jordan's the primary lead on this, so this is just to allow us to have that procurement process. Uh, when we mentioned in the July 24th meeting, you'd asked when we get that proposal. We were shooting for August 15th, but with the current market, that's been delayed slightly, so we're hoping to have those new proposed dollar values uh, by the end of this week, and then Scott will be presenting those numbers to you. Any questions? We're good, thanks. Thank you, Jason. Uh, next is the resolution uh, regarding setting timelines for adoption of the 2024 annual budget. This will be briefed by Matt Boston. Yeah, thanks everybody. Uh, so this is we lost you, Matt. Matt, we can't hear you. Matt, we still can't hear you. All right. Well, Matt, we're going to come back to you. <laughs> so let's give Scott Jordan another try uh, for his resolution and accompanying OPR uh, approving a settlement of claim of damages. Scott, take it away. Can you hear me now? Are you able to hear me? Yes. Great, thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Uh, this is uh, seeking approval to settle a claim uh, for property damage to a resident on Lee Street. This was a flood from a water tank located at Garden Park Reservoir, and this will be the, the final settlement uh, if approved. Questions? Yeah. Thank you, Scott. All right, we're going to go down Thank to you. ordinance C36420 uh, relating to parks amending the uh, section of the municipal code concerning park rules. And this will be briefed by Mr. Chris Wright. Thank you. Uh, I know the council is pretty familiar with um, the issues related to the parks ordinance. There's been an enormous amount of discussion. Um, in the end, the ordinance that was passed by council some weeks ago um, purported to change the operating hours of the parks um, from, um, uh, excuse me, to close the parks from 11 to 5, um, as we discussed at the time, is whether or not the council had the authority to do that under the charter. A request was made to the uh, park board to actually change their hours to conform to the ordinance. The park board declined um, uh, for a number of reasons that um, uh, they've articulated. Um, so with that, the ordinance is coming back now, 
to uh, council um, with just simply a request to change the hours back to those established by the park board uh, from 10 to 6. Um, there's no emergency clause in this, um, so this would not go into effect until, well, 30, you know, 30 days or so, uh, mid to late September. Okay. Questions for Chris? All right. Thank you, Chris. Thank you. Um, Matt, we'll go back to you on the resolution setting timelines for the adoption of the 2024 annual budget. Can you hear me? Yes. Wonderful. Uh, so this is just advancing the timeline for the 2024 budget. Uh, obviously with uh, two new council members coming in in the finals. <laughs> and now you're lost. It's got to be his service. You didn't know he only got five seconds to speak. <laughs> We're getting the budget done before the end of November. <laughs> that's the, that's summer. the story. <laughs> I think we can move on. Okay, yeah. we'll Does move on. Does anybody have questions about this? Because we can hit up Matt later. All right. All right. Matt, you're off the hook. All right, now moving into the first reading ordinances, and I'm just going to hand this over to Marlene for utility rates in the next five. Yeah, so we have five ordinances for council to consider. Um, the ones related to water, uh, wastewater, and um, capital rates for water, wastewater, just um, extend the 2023 rates with no change to 2024. We do have those charts in the Spokane Municipal Code, so we wanted to make sure that those were updated appropriately. And then um, we are making the change to the solid waste disposal and solid waste collection rates. Um, the overall impact to the citizen will be an increase of approximately 2.9 percent. Any questions on that? Did you get our, my request for some of that I, data? I did. So she sent that. I don't have all that uh, No, I don't need it yet, now, but if we can but, connect offline. Yeah, yeah, and this, the self-haul fee, just so you know, in 2022, raised about $250,000. Okay, that's great. And yeah. then and then just to confirm, we, we raised that from $1 to $2? Is that how that went up? No, or? so um, we didn't have a self-haul fee. Um, that was new starting in 2021. Okay. So it went to, it was, I think we brought it in at $2, and then it's gone up with yeah. the rate of increase um, with everything else. So it's gone up 2.9% the last couple of years. Okay. So it's a little over $2 right now, I think $2.12 or something like that is the self-haul fee that goes to pay for disposal costs primarily from neighborhood cleanups, um, camping cleanups, and um, the disposal passes. And then we also are using it to staff um, uh, Recycling and Household Hazardous Waste Center, which is for self-haul customers um, exclusively. Um, in part, we, we implemented the gas or the paint recycling program that's available for people to bring in. Um, and we've uh, in 2022, we... Uh, recycled 2,437 gallons of paint with that addition. Uh, um, and then some other things. Obviously, we talked about the cost of, of code enforcement needs that have been uh, shouldered by the solid waste utility, um, and that's gone up dramatically. Okay. W you know, well outpaced that self haul fee. But, yeah, we'll get to the rest of those details. And I've, I've got a couple of thoughts, but I'll talk to you offline about it. Absolutely. Great. Absolutely. Anything else on that? Thank you, Marlene. Now we'll be looking for a request a motion to substitute the next ordinance, C36429. Second. Discussion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay. And then we need to um, uh, are we, are we I did, think that's all, right? Yeah, that's all. Go ahead. Perfect. So this is uh, relating to updates to the sewer use ordinances, and this will be briefed by uh, Kyle Arrington. Hi, Council. This is Angela Tagnani. I'll be briefing this one instead of Kyle. Uh, good afternoon, Council. President Kinnear. Um, I'd like to confirm that you received the motion to substitute last week. I believe so. Yes. Okay, there was a change to the uh, septic tank definition. Just wanted to clarify that before I go on. Terry, what? Yeah. Yes. Yes. Okay, us. thank you. Um, so these are amendments to SNC 13.03 regarding requirements for grease control devices, oil water separators, and sand traps within the city's sewer service area. Um, the goal of these proposed changes is to reduce the instances of city sewer pipe obstruction from fats, oils, and grease coming from businesses that generate these pollutants. Are there any questions? Questions, Council? 
No, thanks very much. Thank you, Angela. Thank you. And that concludes the briefing for tonight's agenda. Okay. So do we need a motion to um, approve? So moved. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. Then we're moving on to August 28th. All right, going into the consent agenda number one, this is a five-year value, value blanket. We'll be briefed by Rex Strickland. Or Tom Williams. Good afternoon, Council. Thank you uh, for uh, allowing us to bring this up to you. We're looking for a five-year value blanket with Blackster for dual certified um, uniform and wildland pants. It's a five-year contract. This year, we have approximately 80,000 brew for the first layout of these pants to the uh, uniform members. Okay. Any questions? Mm. Questions? Okay, none, thank you. Thank you, Rex. Number two is a purchase from uh, JDL Digital Systems, and this will be briefed by Shauna Ernst. Good afternoon. Just of a video management system that we already use in many capacities, but we're expanding to a regional property and evidence facility to store surveillance video from that facility for two years in accordance with evidence uh, accreditation standards. This will be did with our property auction fund, which is um, regional, and, and so both city and county will be participating in the cost of this. The total cost is just about $43,000, but because we've had a, a previous purchase with Airship, it put us over that $50,000 threshold. Any questions about this? Questions? No, we're good. Thank you, Shauna. Thank you, Shauna. Okay, thank you. So number three, four, and five, um, regarding value blankets, I'm gonna bring up uh, Chris Avert to brief each one of those items. Good afternoon, council members. Uh, today I'm seeking approval for a one-year renewal and amendment for an additional $15,000 with LJ Oil Company for the purchase of ultra-low sulfur number two dye diesel. Uh, this is used for equipment at the waste energy facility and additional funding is needed for escalating diesel prices. The one-year renewal is not to exceed $175,000 plus tax. Uh, the next item is a value blanket amendment with Dykeman to add additional $15,000 for the purchase of variable frequency drives. This increase is needed for the unanticipated replacement of an additional drive. Uh, the total amount for this value blanket is $85,100 plus tax. And the final item is approval for a one-year value blanket renewal with LJ Oil for purchase of Chevron lubrication products. Uh, the annual cost for this item is $55,000 plus tax. Any questions? Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, number six is repairs and maintenance of Pepe machinery. And this will be briefed by Adam Russell. Uh, Garrett, actually, Rick Giddings, I'm, I'm going to go right. ahead and brief that. Awesome. Thank you, Rick. Uh, this is, I'm sorry. This is a purchase approval with Pat Bay Machinery for some uh, annual repair and maintenance for two of the uh, street department's critical and high maintenance pieces of equipment. Uh, total cost uh, for the yearly maintenance on their work in asphalt milling machine is uh, just under $72,000. Uh, major repairs to the Vogel paver are uh, over $27,000. Total expense of $99,252.05 uh, is in the street department budget. Any questions? All right, thank you, Rick. Uh, number seven and eight, for number seven is a two-year value blanket, and then number eight is a contract amendment. This both will be briefed by Major McNabb. Okay, good afternoon again, Council. Uh, Seven is a two-year value blanket with dollars for body armor, not to exceed four hundred thousand dollars. Questions on that? No. And then uh, through the competitive bid process, we are proposing a contract with uh, ABM Janitorial for janitorial services in our buildings. Uh, we. 
actually had that contract uh, solidified in 2021. Bill and I uh, increased prevailing wage wage by 0.55, me, 55 cents per hour, and that caused the need to amend this contract as well as adding the South Precinct as a new facility that we need to maintain. Go ahead. Uh, Mitch McNabb, how long does this contract go through again? I'm sorry, I didn't hear that part. Uh, through 2024, ma'am. With the option for, actually has an option for three one-year renewals. Any other questions? Thank you, Major. All right, number nine and 10 are outside special contract or council uh, contract amendments. These both will be briefed by Lyndon Smithen. Good afternoon again. And actually, uh, there are three, Garrett. There's, I think it's nine, 10, and 11. Uh, a and B. And that is true. Nine, <coughs> eight. Yes, nine has A and B. Oh. So, council, we are asking to amend a couple contract, three contracts actually. On A and B, the first one is for uh, or for the, the first two are for a law firm that we use for officer involved shootings the Schaefer matter and the Bradley matter are both uh, officer involved shootings that occurred some time ago the Schaefer matter um, is in a process it's it's in the litigation process we've gone through a few uh, motions in fact that have been filed with the courts and it is shaping up for a trial date uh, later in 2024. So we are asking to add, amend that contract, adding $50,000 to that because it is in the discovery process and that's pretty time consuming. There will be a lot of information exchange. They will ask for uh, all of our training manuals. They'll ask for all the reports from the officers that were on scene that day and they'll likely start doing depositions as well. So um, that will ramp up quickly and it will eat a lot of uh, the money that we have in that bucket currently. The Bradley matter is more at a initiation status. We have not gotten the report from the Washington State Patrol who did the incident response. Um, this incident occurred about six months ago, but we still don't have uh, the full report from State Patrol and the county. And we also don't have a determination from the county prosecutor's office what is going to happen with this case. So uh, this is kind of in its infancy, but it will ramp up quickly once we clear those two hurdles. So we are asking to increase contract by $100,000. And because of the fact that once it uh, does clear those two hurdles it will be in a discovery process and we will expend a lot a great deal of time and and energy on that uh, we do work with the this law firm keening buckland and mccormick we they represented the city in the novak matter last year so we have a, a good working relationship with this law firm and uh, we are confident that that uh, they are the best litigants that we could go with in these matters um, I have a question. Do we know if the officers involved in these shootings had prior shootings? I cannot answer that right now. Next week, we are going to have executive session to talk about a litigation update of all the litigation cases okay. for the last quarter. These two specifically we can talk about, and I can, I can okay, give you that information. Thank you. Yeah, and, and definitely bring your questions for these two cases next week and we can discuss those. Okay. Council President, so to, based on that, we could defer next week because I hate to be, I like to know a little bit more about what's going on behind the scenes. Well, so this just is you, next week. Exactly. Yeah. Just, I'm just saying, give sure. you $100,000, not knowing where the case is at. Right. Well, I, I, I do know where the cases are at. So you do. We yes. don't. Oh, absolutely. Well, but but that's why I was explaining. Right. Bradley is is kind of in its infancy, but once we get the report back from the state patrol as to what occurred, uh, it will be it, it will start moving forward rapidly. And the the plaintiffs have already asked to go through mediation on this, and um, 
we basically told them we've held them off because we don't even know what happened yet. We don't have the report. So we could have our executive session after briefing, then your questions would be answered in time for the, go hopefully, ahead. Hopefully, hopefully. Yeah. I'm, I'm just curious, what, if, the, if we were to not allocate these funds, what, what would happen? Because I assume there's an expectation that, that we put up a defense, correct? Yes. And so process, what, what happens if that were to happen? What could happen is, is they could withdraw from the case and then we would likely, we would either need to find another law firm to represent us or it would be on my office to represent the city. Gotcha. So, so, so it, we, w this is to pay our bills and um, But they, at the very end of the line, it would come to, the, to our own legal department who would be stepping into that role. Yes. Okay. Ultimately, if we did not have a contract with outside counsel, yes. Gotcha. Okay. Or we could settle. Or we could settle. Absolutely. Okay. Uh, the last is for Summit Law Group. I think everybody is very familiar that they have helped us with negotiating multiple contracts. They are working on SAFO right now. I think Don Williams is going to brief okay. you. SAFO has, has a TA. I believe there are two more contracts. They are very small ones that we need to negotiate. I think it is the captains and chiefs for both police and fire. So hopefully we're transitioning out of negotiating contracts. We also staggered those, so we're not gonna be negotiating four in one year as we did, or six as, as the case may be. Uh, but also Summit Law Group does help us with um, grievance, grievances from the different labor management groups. So um, they will be stepping in and helping with us from time to time. The good news is, Lauren Beatty in our office, we have assigned her to the HR department, so she will be getting up to speed rapidly on those types of matters, and we're hoping that in the future we can transition away from those types of, of issues and, and somebody in-house will handle those. I believe that we'll likely still want to go with Summit to negotiate contracts because the amount of information and the expertise that some of their partners have is, is uh, first rate. What, oh, is, yes. what does human resource advice mean? Well, legal advice in, in the human resource department. So it depends on what it could be. If somebody, if a department is coming and asking that we have a problem employee, what should we do with them? You know, can we just fire them? It may be that no, we have to walk them through the contract and say, no, there are safeguards. We have to go through some process before that person can be terminated. It could just be that um, we're having a problem with this employee. How do we, what can we do legally to change their behavior? Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Uh, you mentioned that uh, Lauren is going to be moving into that HR role, so she's obviously been our support on council. So is there going to be a different attorney assigned? Because obviously we still have a lot of, a lot of stuff going on. No, she, she'll, she will have the ability to do both. Okay. Yes. She won't be sleeping nights. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Any, right. more, Thank any you. questions? We're good. Thanks, Thanks Lyndon. Number 11 is a contract uh, with Control Solutions Northwest for the chiller replacement of the combined communications building, and this will be briefed by David Stockdale. <laughs> Good afternoon, Council President and Council. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Okay, thank you. Um, Fire is requesting your approval of a contract with Control Solutions uh, to replace the chiller at the combined communications building. Control Solutions was a low bidder with a base bid of $121,920 uh, with tax and a 10% contingency fund. We're estimating the total cost of this project to be about $146,182. Any questions for me? Go ahead. I do have a question. So is this cost being split with the other municipalities or the other entities or is it just the city paying for it? Yes, ma'am. Good question. Um, the cost is being split. We're working, uh, Chief Williams is currently working on an interlocal agreement uh, that is yet to be signed, but we will follow the standard historical procedure of splitting the cost with the occupants. So would we be better off holding on until we have an interlocal agreement and voting for this? And is this the full price? Mr. McNabb, is this full price that's before us, the 121.9? Is he talking? I'm sorry, say again. So the, the replacement of the chiller is the 121.9, the 
the total cost of replacement? That's the base bid, yes, for the chiller and the labor. But with sales tax and the 10% contingency reserve, we're estimating the total cost of the project at 146.182. So the agreement for the other parties to pay, there's already a process for that? Is that 10%, 15? I'm just trying to figure out if, um, if there's gonna be other monies coming in, do we know what that might look like? So we wouldn't have to be approving 121.9. Like I said, that, that interlocal is in process. The difficulty with this is if we were to order the chiller today, it probably wouldn't be here till April or May of next year. So there's a very long delay on this. Uh, so it'd be best if we could approve this and start the process um, and we'll work out the reimbursement later. I guess my yet yeah, but I appreciate the information. I just worry that um, when later comes around, we're not going to hear about it. That's what makes me nervous is that if we pay this now without any kind of an MOU or an interlocal, we're not sure if if we get that money back, how that plays out. So um, I get it. I know this is frustrating yeah. for you, but that's my concern with this, and we've got. We've got some time until the 28th to maybe work this through or have some other questions answered. Hello, this is uh, Chief White. Try to answer your question there. We do have a current interlocal that we have with Shrek and the other partners. We're updating it based on the change of fire communication leading and Shrek potentially growing in their space. So we are working on that and that should be completed fairly soon, but we, we are still following the previous um, agreement and they are committed to that. Okay, thanks. All right, now moving on to 12 and 13. These are regarding interlocal agreements with Spokane District 81. These both will be briefed by Marlene Feist. One more time, Council. So we have um, numbers 12 and 13. 12 would reimburse the school district for full repaving of Lamont Street adjacent to the updated Sacagawea Middle School. And um, the 13 would actually um, uh, put in place the interlocal agreement for the school-based health centers at North Central and Shadle Park. Council previously um, allocated ARPA funding for that, so this is just coming back and actually doing the contract with them for those two capital costs um, that we agreed to participate in. And there is um, an SBO related to the Lamont um, paving um, ordinance C36430 a little later in your agenda. Um, we had worked with city council to do $100,000 from residential streets, and then we worked with the CTAB on that um, and with um, Abby, and then um, $78,000 from traffic calming. So it is split up to do that for the Lamont paving. And so I would like to talk to the traffic calming people about some details around that, but uh, we have plenty of time to do that before next week. Perfect. Any other questions? I just wondering um, for the school based health care clinics. Mm -hmm. um, I, I don't remember where conversations left off about some sort of joint media event. We were talking about some tour or something. It was a lot. Yeah, so, so we tried to set that up with the school district, and the, the timing didn't work out great for that, but um, I think we can revisit that. Um, we have a, a meeting that we're setting up with um, the, their administration folks, and Garrett and I, and Andrew, so I think we'll, we'll come back around to that. Oh, if you can bring that up, or if we need to coordinate with Lisa Gardner, too. From yeah, the yeah, yeah, we can have Lisa um, reach out, too, to um, Sandra okay. Gerard, too. Oh, thank yeah, you. Mm -hmm. absolutely. Great. Thank you, Marlene. Number 14 is a four-year uh, Spokane Fire Department of Local 29, SAFCO, and I believe this was briefed at committee, yes. so yes. I don't know if there's any other additional Do questions Do we have any there? other questions? Number 15 is an amendment for an interagency agreement between the Spokane Municipal Court and the Washington Traffic Safety Commission, and this will be briefed by Sarah Thompson. Good afternoon. The Office of Traffic Safety initially awarded DUI Court $50,000 to support the drug and alcohol testing for the program. 
for October 1st, 2022 through September 30th of 2023. And in order for DUI courts to meet the national best practice standards and 10 guiding principles for the DWI courts, additional funding was needed. And so in reaching out to the Office of Traffic Safety, they recognized the importance of additional drug and alcohol testing and they awarded Municipal Courts DUI program an additional $25,000 to support testing through September 30th of this year. Any questions? No. Thank you, Sarah. Thank you, Sarah. And, I, and I believe, too, on the special budget and ordinance that is followed by the C36431, correct? Yes. 6431, good, yes. Perfect. Yeah. All right, number 16 is the low bid for the 2023 residential chip seal projects, and this will be briefed by Jonathan Adams. Good afternoon. Uh, a low bid contract for the 2023 residential chip seal project, which, as you know, is an annual project for the chip seals residential streets around town and the locations located in your briefing packet. Uh, this is a blank agenda item, as you can see. We did open bids today at 115 i believe your agenda sheet accurately states that bids will open next week um, the bids and qualifications will be reviewed today and tomorrow with a final recommendation to award for it to you for next week's current agenda the apparent low bidder is shamrock caving of spokane and which is a firm the city works with frequently um, there was one bidder in final review the low bid is one million four hundred and sixty-two thousand. Uh, this was nineteen thousand above engineer's estimate, which is about one point three percent. Work is expected to be completed later this start later this summer and completed next summer. Are there any questions? No questions. Thank you. Thank you, Jonathan. Thanks. Seventeen is the uh, claims and payments previously approved by Parks and Libraries. Uh, 18 is the council meeting minutes and then moving into the legislative agenda, special budget ordinances. Um, both these items were previously briefed by Marlene and Sarah. And then moving into emergency and final reading ordinances. Uh, the first one is the uh, regional Spokane uh, collaborative um, by council member Bingle. I believe this has been briefed previously as well. And then uh, next is a resolution appointing uh, to fill a position by the Spokane City Council. Jacoby has anything to add on that one? Yeah, thank you, Council. Um, you all got back to Council President with your um, priority interviews. And so I will be sending out um, notification to those who will be interviewed this Thursday, hopefully this evening. Uh, with uh, some questions that they can expect from each of you. This um, resolution was filed blank, like the one that uh, we used to eventually appoint Council President Kinnear, so it will need to be amended um, day of or um, whenever you guys see fit. And uh, it'll be going to PIES uh, next week, Monday, as well. Uh, but interviews are this Thursday, and then I, I believe it's anticipated that you all will go into executive session after those interviews. Any questions? No. Thank you, Jacoby. All right, so all the other ordinances have been briefed um, by Marlene, and then also briefed relating to the sewer use ordinances. There's no first reading ordinances, and just with uh, one hearing, each one uh, regarding the in terms zoning ordinance. Okay. And do we need we need to approve this, don't we? Yes. yes. Do we have a motion to approve? So moved. Second. Discussion. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed. All right. Thank you, everybody. Good job. That was a marathon, and we're going to see you back here at six o'clock sharp, <clears throat> because this is going to be. A lot of stuff to get through. Thanks. Meeting adjourned.